All right, so this is problem number 17. There's two different ways you can do this. You can do this by a brute force, in which case you expand things. I equals 1 to 20, then you get the I squared uh, minus, yeah, I squared minus 2I plus 1, and then expand it out there, the sum from I equals 1 to 20 of I squared minus 2 times the sum from I equals 1 to 20 of I plus the sum from I equals 1 to 20 of 1. That's a brute force approach. Uh, if you want to try a more elegant approach, let's understand what's going on with uh, this summation. Let's write out the first few terms, okay? So at I equals 1, if I put in a 1 here, I get 0 squared, right? At I equals 2, if I put in a 2 here, I get 1 squared plus I equals 3, 2 squared. In fact, where does this end? 19 squared. Good. Now, oh, okay. if you notice, what's happening is that really I've got the sum of squares, but the first one doesn't really contribute anything to the sum. Right. So I can relabel this and work this with a different summation. So it'd be nice if I had some different variable. Let's call it J. J is a really cool letter. Um, and J is going to take the place of I minus 1. <clears throat> now, why is that? Well, because then I'll have the sum of J's. But i got to figure out my new limits of summation. Uh, that's going to be a squared, by the way. So how does that work? Well, when I is 1, what is J going to equal? J equals 1 minus 1 would be 0. So we'll sum from J equals 0. Now, what, what's going to happen at the top of this when we get up there to 20? Well, when I equals 20, what's J going to equal? Yeah, so 19. So there we go. The sum from I equals 1 to 19 of J squared. Now, we already kind of noticed that if you put in a zero here, that doesn't really contribute anything to the sum because you just have zero squared. So for all intents and purposes, we might as well start the summation at 1 like this. Sum from 1 to 19 of, of j squared. And here we can use our formula. So the formula is going to be n times n minus, or n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. So in our case, n is 19. So 19 times, well, call that 20. 2 times 19 is 38, plus 1 is 39 over 6. So that's really what they're doing there to, to figure that one out. Is, is there not a rule on how to get rid of the, to move i minus 1 well, you, just you just do the change of variable like we, we did here. Okay. okay. So I I made that substitution. I said, okay, let's let J equal I minus 1. That way it kind of collapses things down to the point where I just have one term. And now I can use my formulas. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with this up here. It's just a lot longer. Right. That's all. It's, it's that way or it's the other way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Those are your choices. So you did this approach? Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. No, I didn't just scale that square. Oh. Like, all I did is bring that <clears throat> square minus one square. Okay. Well, that's that's where you went wrong. It worked out. No. It's, it's absolute coincidence. Yeah. Um, you will certainly draw the ire of your professor if you, if you square that out as... I squared minus one. It's not. No. You well, that's that's essentially what you described. No, I did I squared minus that little sign. She did I squared minus negative one squared. So be plus one. And just added those signs. Okay, but either way though, when you square this out, you don't get anything like this. You you get a middle term that's involved here. Right. You get a, a minus two i. So. 
I mean, if, if in this particular example something happened to work out, then wow, play the lottery today. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I, I believe you. I'm not, I'm not doubting you on that one. But, you know, in general, uh, when you square that out, you better get that uh, I squared minus 2I. You better get that middle term. Okay. okay. It'll be there. All right. So anything else on problem 17 here? Okay. All right. Let me uh, kill this one then. All right.